As California shuts its doors on SpaceX's ambitious launch plans, where can they go for their next space missions? Honestly, nowhere could be more ideal than the coast of Florida. What Florida's governor did is a big-time solution for SpaceX after facing pushback from what Cali's Gov did over increasing their launch counts. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech, and thank you again for always checking out our videos. All right, getting into it. The relationship between SpaceX and California's Coastal Commission is getting a lot more tense these days. The cause lies in the commission's opposition to a plan by SpaceX and the U.S. Space Force to increase rocket launches at Vandenberg Air Force Base to up to 50 a year. In response, Elon's filed a lawsuit against the commission, arguing that their decision was based on an unacceptable reason his political comments on the X platform. This move appears to be based on personal bias, lacking consideration for the country's broader interests. Even California's Governor Gavin Newsom, who rarely aligns with Elon, said, I'm with Elon at a campaign event for Harrison Waltz in North Carolina. Moreover, this week, Elon and SpaceX got more attention from Washington. Congressman Vince Fong wrote his own letter to the CCC. I have grave concerns over their decision, with commissioners citing personal animus to justify what should have been a non-political decision. As a member of Congress, I believe that government decisions should be made in a fair and impartial manner without regard to political views. In all my years in public service, I've never heard of a commission discussing politics as the basis for official action. This seems to be an egregious use of political discrimination to punish a specific company. With pressure coming from both the state and federal levels now, and from both parties, the CCC has remained quiet on the issue. Even worse for the CCC is that many other lawmakers will likely be supporting Elon's lawsuit after Election Day. I can't say who, but I do know of others here in Sacramento who will be writing to the CCC as well as once elections are done, Dana, a Capitol staffer, told The Globe on Thursday. I know Newsom did it, but many don't want to be seen supporting Elon publicly, even if it's just for SpaceX launches until after the election. It's why you haven't seen other Democrats go after the CCC decision yet and so many Republicans who have. And remember, it's because why some of the commissioners said no to the launches. They made it personal. You can't make decisions on a personal level. That's why lawyers and lawmakers recuse themselves from things they have a personal stake in or related to somebody there or something like that. Aerospace consultant Miles Green added, With the lawsuit, SpaceX can bring this back around, and all they have to do is show that SpaceX launches have military value. Rejections under that sort of basis are common enough, so you just bolster your next application request. That decision making it personal was highly unusual, though. You can't get personal in decisions like that, and they did. With this momentum, it's likely Elon will have the advantage in the lawsuit. But even if increased Falcon 9 launches are eventually approved, we can't overlook the barriers that officials who oppose Elon might deliberately create. For this reason, SpaceX ought to consider which coastal locations would be more welcoming to their missions and rocket launches. And none other than Florida, the long-standing capital of U.S. rocket launches, offers SpaceX the ideal launch site. First, let's talk about the close, solid relationship between SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, and the head of the state of Florida. Musk has had a strong rapport with Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis holds SpaceX and Elon in high regard, consistently creating favorable conditions for the company's growth in Florida, even introducing legislation to further boost SpaceX's strength in the state. This support's made Florida a standout as a place where top aerospace companies find everything they need to turn their cutting-edge ideas into a reality. In Florida, aerospace companies have a footing in the new space economy or any aerospace market with direct access to established infrastructure, a skilled workforce, and an environment geared for innovation. Only Florida offers unmatched experience, exclusive financial tools, and a prime location over other regions. In appreciation of this support from Florida's leader, Elon has also shown an impressive attitude in return. Late last year, Governor DeSantis announced his bid for the 2024 Republican presidential race, and notably, he was joined and supported by Elon Musk. In November, Elon tweeted that he hoped that the next president would be somewhat sensible and centrist. He asked if he would support DeSantis, and he replied that he would. However, in 2024, dynamics shifted as DeSantis exited the presidential race, while Elon pivoted to support former President Donald Trump, who's considered DeSantis' biggest rival in the Republican nomination race. Does this mean their relationship is soured? Definitely not, as Governor DeSantis remains supportive of Trump's chances of winning the election, despite some differences in opinion. 
Elon has spoken positively about Florida's business environment. SpaceX has a big workforce on the Space Coast, with rocket manufacturing and launch facilities in Cape Canaveral. In 2021, Elon said he discussed with DeSantis reducing Miami traffic with tunnels built by his boring company. In 2022, following Hurricane Ian, Florida partnered with SpaceX to provide Internet to severely impacted areas via Starlink. At this point, some might think that hurricanes are a bit of a downside to Florida, and that's not entirely wrong either, as Florida, being a tropical state, is prone to some severe storms. So why risk expensive equipment with the potential bad weather and even hurricanes? Well, first off, bad weather can happen anywhere, even on the West Coast, especially in Cali, you got earthquakes, while the Midwest has plenty of tornadoes. This reality means that not only does Florida, but all agencies and launch systems across the U.S. coast need to contend with nature's challenges, and contingency plans are always going to be in place for rocket launches. Of course, with these preparations, the weather shouldn't pose a challenge for SpaceX at this location. Besides the advantages mentioned earlier, Florida is just more convenient for launches because it's so close to the ocean. Launch site in Florida, Cape Canaveral, is located along the east coast of the U.S., so rockets can be safely launched to the east over the open waters of the Atlantic. If there's ever an issue with a rocket after liftoff, space flight operators can safely put it down in the Atlantic Ocean without endangering the public. Modern-day rockets are also comprised of multiple stages. When one stage runs out of fuel, it can shed from the rocket and fall into the ocean without harm. SpaceX has taken advantage of this, sending a floating platform out into the Atlantic where the first stage of its Falcon 9 rockets can land after sending the payload into space. Some rockets also come back to the Florida coast where they land not far away from where they blasted off moments prior. The other advantage that SpaceX has in increasing the launch rate is Florida's proximity to the equator. The west to east rotation of the Earth causes all points on Earth, except the poles themselves, to move eastward with some velocity. This eastward velocity is greatest at the equator with the Earth rotating at a speed of roughly 1,040 miles an hour and decreases as you travel away from the equator, eventually reaching zero directly over either of the poles. SpaceX can take advantage of the Earth's natural rotation by launching eastward from Florida, specifically from Cape Canaveral. This speed at which the Earth rotates at Florida is roughly 914 miles an hour, helping give rockets a little extra boost to get to their destination. Now, while it's not impossible to launch rockets from higher latitudes, that extra speed boost from the Earth's rotation saves on fuel that could be used to help the rocket to get to the proper speed. And as a result, a rocket launching out of Florida can send a heavier spacecraft or satellite up into space. While Florida may be the best choice for SpaceX if rocket launches are limited in California, that move has its own challenges. SpaceX's competitors here are concerned about the increased activity the company could bring, especially with the Starship launches for which SpaceX is seeking FAA approval to conduct in Florida. This application is currently under review, allowing local businesses, organizations, and the public to share their views on the pros and cons of SpaceX's plans. And SpaceX's competitors are making their opposition clear. Blue Origin submitted a three-page letter to the FAA asking for a cap on the number of launches and landings, requesting that the 44 planned launches be reduced to an unspecified number with minimal impact on the local environment, operating personnel, and the local community, as they put it. Blue Origin argues that SpaceX's safety margins overlap with the launch pads, hangars, and offices from other companies, including their own launch pad 36, all leased from Kennedy. ULA's criticisms go even further in a 22-page document submitted as part of the consultation process. They're accusing SpaceX of drafting their own environmental impact statement for their grandly named Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, where they've been testing Starship. However, it appears that these companies are joining forces to attack SpaceX in an effort to reclaim their position in Florida and secure their interests. Both Blue Origin and ULA argue that SpaceX should compensate for potential risks associated with Starship launches. Both companies oppose Starship operations at Kennedy and believe that the rocket is too untested, too dangerous, and too disruptive to fit within the ecosystem of other users at Kennedy Space Center. The FAA is ultimately going to decide whether these concerns are valid and whether they are enough to prevent Elon and SpaceX from pursuing their Starship ambitions. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for checking out the video and see you next time. Bye.